Do you need to make a custom Google map for your website? It's actually quite simple and I'm going to show you how to create one and it'll only take a few minutes. This is great if you're a business with multiple locations or maybe you're an entertainment district and you want to highlight several businesses in your neighborhood. Whatever your reasoning, you may be looking for a simple solution. And the reason I like this technique is because you can create a custom map without worrying about installing multiple API keys from Google, which some of those custom map widgets out there require. But before we get started, let me ask you something. Have you ever thought about how one unexpected accident could put your whole business at risk? Let me tell you about Next Insurance. They make business insurance fast, affordable, and simple. You get a tailored quote in minutes completely online. Plus, you can instantly download a certificate of insurance whenever you need it right from their mobile app. No waiting on hold, no piles of paperwork, just the coverage you need so that you can focus on running and growing your business. More than 600,000 business owners already trust Next. And with a 4.7 out of 5 rating on Google, you know you're in good hands. So if you're ready to protect your hard work, check out the link in the description and get your free quote today. Now, let's dive into your custom Google map. Be sure to give this video a like if you find the information helpful and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one. And of course, if you have any questions, you can drop those in the comments below. We're going to get started with our custom Google map by showing you what we're trying to make here so that you get a better sense of where we're going. So this is a custom map. It allowed me to choose locations that I wanted to put on the map. I can stylize the little markers that they have for them. We're going to go through how to change icons, colors, all of that. This is great if you have a small business and you're wanting to showcase multiple locations, or if you have a district or a neighborhood and you want to highlight everything on the map, this would be a great way to showcase multiple locations. So to get started, we will be going to mymaps.google.com. When you type that in, it's going to reconfigure the URL, but do know I'll leave that link in the description as well for you. So I don't have any maps created yet, but all I need to do to create one is click this red button. It's just going to give you a little warning saying that everything that's associated with creating this map is going to be in the drive. That's completely fine. We'll hit create. And then we start off with this blank map. So a couple of details that we want to fill out. The first one is being the map title and the description. The description probably doesn't matter so much, but at least for the map title. So let's say in this instance that I was going to highlight a few restaurants in, we're going to pick a random location. We're going to say the Boston area. So let's do, let's do a title that says restaurants in Boston. And we'll just have a description of some of my favorite places. Okay, we're going to hit save on that. And then the next thing that we want to look at is this untitled layer that we have. So we can give that one a name as well. So I'm just going to put absolute favorites there. We'll hit save. You'll see why we'll have multiple layers in a minute. And the next thing that we need to do is add a location. So let's go find some restaurants in Boston. The first one, we're just going to type in a name of a restaurant and we can see what comes up. Buttermilk and bourbon was the one that I was looking for. So that one we can click. And if this is the location that we want, then we can, all we need to do to add it to our map is click this little plus sign that says add to our map. And we can see it over here. We're going to pick another restaurant. So I'm going to type it in Sarma restaurant on Pearl Street. We're going to click this guy and then we can confirm that, yes, these are the details that we want to add. So I'm going to click add to map as well. And now we can see that our restaurant is over here. Next, let's add another layer. We're going to click add layer and then we've got this over here so we can edit this one. I'm just going to call it great options. You'll see why we're doing this in a minute. Let's pick one more restaurant. We're going to do Moon Cusser, which is also in there. And we can confirm that that's our location. So we're going to click Add to Map. And now it has gone over on our second layer. So let's zoom out a little bit. If you're looking at this map, you're kind of like, wow, this is overwhelming and a lot. So in order to be effective, I do think that we need to change our base map. So there's a lot of details going on right now and probably more details than we want. I'd like for the map locations that I've selected to stand out a little bit. 
And so when we go to these different maps, we're like, that's just way too much information. You can see, even see this one was. I'm liking this one because it's a lot lighter. And we can see that our three locations that we have are standing out against all of the other streets. And so it really does highlight it. So I do like this one. It's called Light Political. Another great option would be Mono City. It's a little bit more of a sepia toned with some pinks in there. But I think that also it allows for those locations to stand out quite a bit. There's a few more options, of course, for whatever project that you're working on, you can play around and see if there's one that you like over the other. I'm going to go with this light political right now. Because we've got these blue icons, I do think it would be great to edit them a little bit. So as I hover over these, we can see that I have the ability to change the color and I can even change the icon if I want to. So if I want to make these stand out, I might choose this purple color and then I could do something like this knife and spoon to kind of to indicate our restaurant there. I might also do the same thing with this one, changing it to match. I could do the same there. And then we can see that those two are different. And now this other location under our great options, this moon cluster is still in the blue. So if we wanted to change that color to make it different, you get the idea. You can definitely do that. We might give it a different color just because it was a different option. And the reason that we have these on different layers is because when you go to put this map in action, you do have the ability to turn them off. So if somebody's navigating of like, okay, I just want to see the absolute favorites and not so much the great options, I can turn the great options off. The same goes with that other one. I can turn the absolute favorites off and then we can kind of toggle and navigate from there. So creating the map was fairly easy. Putting it into action is a little bit different. Now they do have some options. Of course, you have the ability to embed on your site. So if I click this option here, it's gonna say, hey, this map isn't public yet. So you do need to make sure that you're changing the permissions. In order to change the permissions, I would click share, and then I would turn this one on. Anyone with this link can view. I'm gonna close that. And then I should have the ability to embed it on my site now. It's gonna give me a iframe link. So I'm gonna copy this. And so what I've done is I have copied it and now I've pasted that code into my website. You can see that I'm using the Divi Builder if you're familiar. I know I have a lot of other tutorials on the Divi Builder, but all I did was use the code module and I popped that iframe in as it was. So you can see the three locations, but the other thing that we can see is this top bar. Whenever you create a custom Google map, it's going to be associated to that Gmail account. So if I had a branded Gmail where it was like Michelle's favorite restaurants.com and I was okay with like having this information there, that would be fine because maybe it was a branded Gmail. But if it's a personal Gmail and you're doing this for your business, you might not want your name to be plastered all over it or your photo or anything like that. So how do we hide this top bar? This is my little trick in doing so. I have an example. I'm just gonna show you right here. So this is the iframe that they give you. The iframe has your unique URL and then they already put a default size in. We can change that, no worries there. I'm gonna copy this URL there and then I'm gonna move you down to this other instance of the map that I created. What I did, I'm just gonna replace this with our with our map really quickly. That was our new map link. I added a little bit of extra code so that we could remove that top bar. So the first thing you'll see here is just a div with a style. You could you could put all these in a class and you could just put a class name on that if you wanted to, completely up to you, but I wanted to write it all out so that you could see it. I've got my height set at 600 pixels. That is completely customizable. If you don't want it to, if you would rather it be 400 pixels, that's up to you. You put in whatever value you think makes the most sense. I do have it at width of 100% so that it's spanning the width of my entire row. And then I have this display inline block and then overflow hidden. The other things that you will see when we go down, I have a little bit of a style on this iframe too. I set the position at relative and then I put the top at negative 60 pixels and put border none. We can then see our URL. I've got the width set to 100% and 600 
Again, you can see the end of the iframe, end of the div. Why did I do that? So by moving it up 60 pixels and like setting that overflow to hidden, the bar still exists there, but you can't see it. So now all we get is our designed custom map with our colors and icons, and we don't see that top bar that is showing there. So if you don't want to be stuck with having that top bar on all of your custom maps, there is a little way that you can do a trick to kind of hide it with some HTML code. I'll have a blog post linked in the description as well so that if you want to reference this code again or copy and paste it for yourself, that you have the ability to grab that so that you can put this on your own website and create as many custom Google Maps that you want. Going back, just to go over any other tips that we may not have discussed, this is obviously the best way that I think to add a location that already exists. So all you have to do is type in what you're looking for and then it brings up that list of options and then you have the ability to add it to the map if you want to. If you were like, I just want to choose my own locations, they do have markers so you can add a marker and you can choose wherever you want to go. So if I literally wanted to just randomly drop it here, I can do that. I can give it a title there. I can give description or any other details that I want to put in there. I can save that and then that coordinate is actually getting saved right there. So you have the ability to stylize it just like all the other ones. If I wanted to move it, I can use this hand tool here to move it to a different spot. I can actually draw a line. So like maybe this was like a district that I wanted to do. So you have the ability to kind of add different polygons if you want to. You can add directions. You can undo any of the changes that you want. So there's a few more tools there. But if you're looking just to add locations that already exist, I highly recommend just typing it and letting it help locate those for you with the exact address. So let me know what you think. Hopefully this was helpful in getting you to create your own custom Google Maps. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.